Good morning, students. Today we are going to discuss the poem "No Men Are Foreign" by James Corkup. This is a personal favorite because the poem celebrates the theme of universal humanity, which is a very essential issue in the contemporary society, and this has been. a very important issue since the dawn of civilization now the poet james scorcop is an english poet to whom goes the credit of penning down more than 45 books and i would like to mention one book called no more of hiroshima's all these poems or rather all these works as you can understand from the title itself highlight or elucidate the issue of carving away war and celebrating brotherhood fraternity peace and humanity this poem penned by the poet is not an exception either it also upholds the theme of universal humanity it claims that all men transcending the narrow discriminatory boundaries of religion politics economics caste creed nation based differences are actually one and one single race that is humanity Let's start the poem. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is art like this, in which we all shall lie. They too, aware of sun and air and water. are fed by peaceful harvests by wars long winter starved their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own remember they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispossess betray condemn remember we who take arms against each other it is the human art that we defile our hills of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own remember no men are foreign and no countries strange i recited the entire poem because it is a very favorite poem and this is a poem which is very essential as i told you in the present social context now i shall start the explanation consider the first four lines of the poem remember no men are strange no countries foreign the poem the poet reminds its readers his readers to remember the very essential fact that no men irrespective of their origin nation based political based religion based is strange all men trading the soil of the earth belongs to belong to one singular race and that single race is humanity although we have multiple nations in this world at the end of the day no country can be considered to be foreign because we all share the same sky and the same earth 
there is a poem by a japanese poet he is a poet from actually malta a very small island he's called his name is antoni kasar and the name of the poem is passport the poem is written in a in the form of a very small book that resembles a passport why am i mentioning this poem in this context because in this poem the poet advocates the theme that we should not be requiring a passport to travel from one country to another because at the end of the day this entire world belongs to us the entire earth belongs to all human beings so there can be no division no discrimination there should not be any passport to travel because the idea the very idea of a passport which is required to travel from one country to another actually emphasizes the discrimination the differences between the nation so in this poem the passport antony kasar negates the necessity of a passport to travel from one country to another thus celebrating the concept of universal humanity the same theme that is celebrated by james carcup in this poem no men are foreign so beneath all uniforms a single body breathes like ours so what is this what is meant by all uniforms all nations have their own army all nations have their own soldiers and all the soldiers have their own attire but beneath the multiple attire beneath the numerous attire the colorful attire of the military of the various nations it is a single human body that breathes very much like ours when an american and indian are fighting or a chinese and a new indian are fighting or a pakistani and an indian are fighting we should remember that although the military dresses are different it is the same human being beneath the uniform so it is actually a human fighting against a human it is humanity fighting against humanity all our brothers like swami vivekananda in his chicago speech on 12 september long back in 1893 here the poet addresses all humans irrespective of their origin as brothers so all brothers walk upon the earth like this in which we all shall lie here we are reminded of bible genesis in bible where it is said that we all have come from dust and we all shall return to dust so all the human beings irrespective of their origin have originated from dust and will return to dust and we all inhabit dwell on the same earth then how can we be discriminated after this we are talking the poet talks about the bounty of nature sun air and water the abundance of natural wealth which is showered upon all humans alike so all humans alike enjoy the bounty of nature the plentiful blessing of nature nature never discriminates among humans nature never creates any discriminatory barrier among the humans then why we all people are fed abundantly by the peaceful harvest of the farmer whatever the farmers cultivate in their fields it goes to the people and all farmers of all nations are working day and night by the sweat of their brow to feed us again during winter actually here winter is compared to war when war comes when war arrives all the people of all nations starve like people have to go through hardship have to undergo the pain of hardship during the dreary and dry and bleak winter season so here war and winter they are compared to each other on basis of the unproductiveness 
on the harshness of production on of the lack of production so all people of the earth are blessed by nature alike and they suffer during winter or war from starvation from the pangs of hunger the pain of starvation the pang of hunger is the same for all people and american and indian they starve when they starve they feel the same pain then how do we discriminate their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own so their hands the same hands which the other people of other nations use are used by us to earn our livelihood we use the same hand here physiological structure is brought as a parameter to negate all differences and unite all humans in a single chord of peace and harmony all people have to toil have to put in hardship and labor in order to earn their livelihood then what is the basis of discrimination how do we construct this narrow walls of discrimination among the humans then the poet reminds us that whenever we hold antagonistic feeling towards our brothers whenever we spread despotism hatred despise antagonism towards our brothers we must remember that any human belonging to some other race or nation is actually a reflection of our very own an image of our own self they are also humans like us they are our brothers we all are bound in a cord of humanity so when we fight against other people it is ourselves that we are fighting against when we perpetrate violence antagonism or hatred against other people it is ourselves that we are hating we are perpetrating violence against it is ourselves that we are condemning so we are constructing discrimination against our own self it is our self that we are betraying dispossessing or condemning remember we who take arms against each other it is the human earth that we defile so when we fight when we spread violence hatred despotism antagonistic feelings against each other it is our very own rest that we are destroying devastating vanquishing when we indulge in bloodshed when we take up arms or ammunition against each other and indulge in bloodshed it is our human art that we defile that is we actually spoil our soil with our own blood when we murder assassinate or kill other persons to satiate our jealousy our cruelty out of cruelty out of jealousy when we kill others when we indulge in bloodshed it is the human art the mother art that we defile remember the lines of kavi nazrul if you have read about the rebel poet kavi nazrul कांडारी बोलो डूबी मानूष सन्तान मोर मार सो इट इज नट अबाउट हिंदू इट इज नट अबाउट मुस्लिम इट इज नट अबाउट अमेरिकन इट इज नट अबाउट इंडियन इट इज नट अबाउट द व्हाइट इट इज नट अबाउट द ब्लैक इट इज नट अबाउट द हैव इट इज नट अबाउट द हैव नट इट इज अबाउट ह्यूमन बींग एवरी ह्यूमन बींग इज द चाइल्ड ऑफ मदर आर्थ इज अ चाइल्ड ऑफ मदर नेचर so when we kill another human being it is a son of mother earth that we kill it is our own brother that we kill because all of us are children of the same mother earth our hills of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own so the blanket of air the atmosphere belongs to every human being the same air that you breathe 
is the same air that I breathe. But when we spread hatred, when we fight, when we declare a war against one nation, then it is a hail of fire and dust. Here, hail of fire and dust is a metaphor for cruelty, jealousy, animosity, antagonistic feelings, violence, hatred that we perpetrate against each other. If you remember Fire and Ice, the poem that you had, the poet predicted the world will end either in fire, that is desire, greed, or in ice, that is coldness, indifference, insensitivity, rigidity. So either of these two destructing emotions will be the cause of human destruction, the destruction of human civilization. Either of these emotions will be responsible for the devastation of human race, either greed, desire, lust or coldness, indifference, insensitivity. And these emotions, these very poisonous emotions, baneful emotions, very vindictive emotions contaminate the air, pollute the air around us. The same air is like it is getting segregated invisible walls of discrimination are being constructed among us when we spread these ideas of discrimination or difference when we spread this hatred and we declare war against one another remember again the poet is repeating the first line of the poem to emphasize to embark upon the same theme that ties the entire poem, the same emotion that vibrates through the entire poem. No men are foreign and no country strange. By repeating the same line at the beginning and the end of the poem, the poet is doing nothing but reminding the reader that it is unity that binds all the stanzas of the poem. It is this unity that binds all humanity as well. Always remember a structure of a poem has a deep significance to the theme of the poem. So when the poet repeats the same line, he shows that all the stanzas are united by the same theme. Just as all human beings are united by this same concept, by this same emotion that all of us are same. Although we are constructing invisible walls among us, invisible barriers among us to discriminate ourselves on the basis of caste, creed, religion, economics, politics, but actually we are all the same human beings. We all are children of Mother Earth. So we should not contaminate our environment by spreading these emotions, these negative emotions, these destructive emotions. There is no rhyme in this poem. Alliteration is present when we say body breaths, wars, winter, B sound and W sound. Uniform is a metaphor for the military of different country. As I told you, war time is a metaphor for winter season. The word remember is repeated through the entire poem. And the first line and the last line are repeated. Enjambment is used in all the stanzas. Enjambment is when one line is carried forward to the next line without any punctuation. And the same theme is also carried forward. It is not only about the absence of punctuation. It is also about the same thing being carried forward, carried forward without any punctuation. Please Find out the enjambment on your own. I'll just say in stanza 1, line 2, 3, 4. In stanza 2, line 3 and 4. In stanza 3, again 1, 2, 3. In stanza 4, line 1 and 2. In stanza 5, lines 2 and 3 are instances of enjambment. So this is an anti-war poem because... It propagates the idea of universal humanity and it inspires people to abstain from warfare. It indulges people, it inspires people 
to understand the fact that we all belong to one race that is humanity so we should not declare war against one another and indulge in gory bloodshed and devastate ourselves we should not construct invisible walls and discriminate ourselves from each other we should rather unite ourselves bind ourselves in a single chord of unity humanity harmony and peace and celebrate fraternity universal humanity peace and harmony we should all try to play the melodious tune of universal humanity and peace and harmony instead of declaring war against each other since the poem propagates or celebrates or commemorates the theme of universal humanity and inspires the readers to abstain or restrain from declaring war against each other from fighting against each other from constructing invisible barrier against each other from perpetrating violence hatred antagonism against each other therefore it is an anti war poem the word uniform referring to military reinforces this theme and elucidates the poem as an anti war poem james carkup is a social poet in this regard who is fighting for the cause of society who is fighting for the welfare of society who is fighting for the welfare of the human race i hope i have been able to convey the messages in the poem effectively to you if still you have any problem in grasping any concept feel free to drop your comment in the drop box in the comment section thank you stay safe bye